was well done and uh, we look forward to your your ongoing uh, contributions to our to our great uh, uh, Catholic school community. Uh, so so thanks and congrats again. Um, all right, and thanks Denise for uh, for your um, uh, time to update as always. Okay. Um, all right, uh, moving right along. Um, so some more exciting uh, news and information. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to uh, uh, Jen, our, our co-chair, um, to take us through uh, updates on our CEPA collection. Good evening, everyone. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce the 2021-2022 CPIC members. The individuals denoted in red have been recently elected to their uh, to, to their position and will begin their two-year term in September. So our members for the upcoming school year at large, we have Jerry Bergen, Laura Gallo, Maria Lorenko, Sarah Siwash. In Burlington, representing Burlington, we have Jordan Kranz and Tiana Aruda Nguyen's. In Oakville, we have Camille Bardwell and Violetta Barani. And in North Halton, we have Kevin Camus and myself, Jennifer Santos. Our community representative position is currently vacant and will be filled in September. Um, our ROPSI representative um, was just speaking, Denise Carell Teddy. And our trustee representative is Marvin Dort, uh, vice chair and Milton trustee, with Tim O'Brien as the alternate, who is our Burlington trustee. And our staff representatives are Nancy Denoffel one of our superintendents of education, and Vince Monaco, a principal, and the alternate is Vince Chinea. I'm sorry if I mispronounced any of those names. And lastly, our deanery representative is Father Dave Walter with Holy Cross Parish in Georgetown. We'd also like to thank our departing members for their commitment to CPIC and their school communities. Um, leaving us this year are Steve Boulanger, Olu Lyomid, Joel McLeod, Lydia Efronova, and Sarah Furlong Warren. Thank you very much for your contribution over the last two years. Next up on our agenda is um, a breakout, um, big breakout uh, rooms. So you all should have received a link. Um, I received mine sometime early this afternoon um, to your breakout room. What we're gonna do is everyone's gonna start, leave this meeting and click on that link to go to their breakout room, which has been organized by Family of Schools to discuss Catholic School Council best practices. So I think we've alluded to a couple of times that we are working on um, kind of a, a handbook per se of best practices for school councils. So we'd like to gather your thoughts on best practices um, for school councils. Um, if you could please um, uh, have somebody take notes and send those notes to our CPIC address. It's denoted on the agenda. Um, by May 21st, which is Friday, that would be great, and we will uh, coordinate all those um, responses. And also, if you could please um, record your responses for elementary and secondary schools separately. Um, those councils tend to operate a little bit differently. Um, so um, some comments that might be applicable to, for example, to a secondary council wouldn't be applicable to an elementary one. So if you could please, um, whoever is taking notes, uh, separate um, your responses from elementary and secondary schools, that would be great. So we're going to break off into those um, breakout rooms. It's now 7.32. Um, I would ask that by 7.47 you exit your breakout rooms and link, you're going to have to um, go back into this main meeting. So last time I believe everyone was pushed and pulled, but this time you're going to need to physically leave this meeting, go to your breakout room, physically leave that meeting and come back to this meeting. So we hope to see you all back at 747. We've got a great presentation coming up on the uh, math de streaming program and um, virtual school best practices. So um, we will see you in about 15 minutes. Thank you.
Sorry. Um, can someone help with the link? I did not receive the link. Hi, Kevin. I'm just uh, seeing how to help you out here.
Okay, welcome back, folks. We'll uh, give it another a minute here. I see um, people quickly logging back in uh, just before we get into our next uh, agenda item. All right, and just while we're waiting for the last few uh, more folks to log back in, uh, just a reminder for uh, the the note takers from the various breakout uh, groups, uh, if you would kindly summarize the, uh, the the notes and takeaways from from your breakout session, and e email them to us at uh, cpec at hcdsb uh, dot org. Uh, that'd be great if you could do that. You know, after the meeting, that would be terrific. And of course, they will all be consolidated and, and shared out. Um, I can personally say I was I was I attended the uh, the Loyola Family Schools session and uh, heard a couple of really good really good ideas uh, for for parent engagement um, and um, obviously uh, you know pulling together events in in, in our virtual world uh, so some really good stuff look forward to to seeing the rest of them. Yeah. Okay, it looks like we've got uh, the vast majority uh, back, uh, so we'll we'll carry right along here. Our next agenda item is um, uh, in regards to grade nine math de-streaming and uh, to speak to us uh, this evening about that um, from our equity and inclusion department, we have uh, Sita and also joining us is uh, uh, Kristen Davison. So uh, ladies, if you would kindly take it away, thank you. Thank you so much and good evening, everybody. Um, I'm just going to take a moment to share my PowerPoint and Hope that things work out. That's wonderful. Oh. I can see it now, Sita. Okay. I'm just going to adjust my screen a little bit over here. Okay. So good evening, everybody, and thank you for inviting us to share some information uh, regarding uh, the Matt D streaming. And we're going to be talking a little bit about the why, who, and what of D streaming. Um, so I'm Sita Jairam, and I lead the board's human rights and equity work. And I'm so happy that my colleague Christy's joined me today. Christy? Hi, everyone. I'm Christy Davison, and I am a secondary curriculum consultant for the board. So in terms of engaging with our presentation this evening, of course the chat is open and so we will try our best to attend to that while we are collecting our thoughts and presenting. But there are also two other options on your screen right now. So if you hold up your smartphone in camera mode to the QR code, it will automatically take you to a Microsoft form where you can fill in questions as well as the, the question form link is there on the screen and I'll just pop it into the chat for you right now. We're going to try and save about five minutes at the end for questions, but just in case we don't get to all of them, uh, we'll be sure to respond with a frequently asked questions document after the presentation. Thank you so much, um, Christy. I'm still having some trouble with my PowerPoint. Okay. So before we talk about the uh, the why and the what of the of de streaming, um, we wanted to sort of highlight and emphasize that the work of de streaming really aligns well with what we stand for as a board in terms of supporting all students to achieve, believe, and belong. Uh, the core principles of Catholic social teaching, human rights and equity, and a commitment to upholding indigenous rights are key pillars of the work we do. So while de streaming is a ministry led initiative, it really amplifies our own commitment to every student. So this commitment uh, to every student is also enshrined in our equity and inclusive education policy um, and one of the uh, 
pillars of this policy is about inclusive curriculum. So the policy recognizes that strengthening inclusive and culturally responsive and relevant teaching um, curriculum assessment are essential to promoting student achievement. As a board, we're committed to ensuring that all students achieve their potential and are supported in choosing appropriate pathways that meet their aspirations. Thank you, Sita. And then this is the actual uh, statement about these streaming that came from the ministry. So Ontario's vision for these streaming is to address policies and practices that negatively impact students so that all students are supported to be prepared for the senior program. That's grade 11 and grade 12 in secondary school have equity of access to pursue any post-secondary pathway they choose and be successful in their future careers. So when we think about belonging, think of the impact of instead of counseling certain students in or out of certain pathways about viewing all of those pathways as equally valuable and important and welcoming everyone into the secondary school together. It's going to have a huge impact on belonging for students. Thank you, Christy. So when we think about, um, so who is negatively impacted by streaming? Uh, we need to understand that data gathered in different boards shows that consistently and disproportionately Indigenous, Black, and racialized students, as well as students who live in low income households and students with special education needs are the ones who've been uh, streamed into uh, the applied um, uh, stream and therefore their outcomes have been very different and because of the perceived lower ability, their ability to reach their full potential and uh, choose pathways uh, of their choosing have been hindered by that. So in recognition of the systemic barrier that um, you know negatively impacts particular groups of st students, um, that was the focus when the streaming was um, initiated. So what are some of the reasons behind this move to de-streaming? Well, Ontario is actually the only Canadian province that separates youth into academic and non-academic streams as early as grade nine. So this is a research-based decision informed by information and research from Ontario, Canada, and in fact, the world. Streaming in early secondary school also has been shown to have significant negative and long-term impacts on students who are placed in lower streams, quote unquote, while having little to no benefit for higher achieving students. The research shows that mixed ability uh, classrooms and groupings are the most advantageous for all students. And we also see significantly lower transition rates to post-secondary for students who take mainly applied courses in grade nine. So the longer we can keep as many options open to as many of our students as we can, the better those outcomes will be. Right. So building on um, what Christy just shared, so if we think about de-streaming as a way to promote systemic equity, we can see from the data that's been gathered at other school boards, such as uh, the Toronto District School Board, that students in applied streams are far less likely to graduate and far less likely to enter uh, post-secondary um, education. And we know this from the data that's been collected from other boards. As uh, Halton Catholic, we have not yet started collecting data, uh, but we are mandated to, and I'll speak to that in just a few minutes. Um, the other thing we wanted to highlight is that uh, issues of uh, inequitable outcomes are not new, and de-streaming was tried uh, in the 90s, in the early 90s, once before as well. Um, and some of the um, uh, some of the results of that two years of de-streaming really pointed to some modest improvements. Uh, and there was an impact study done uh, uh, based on the de-streaming initiative in a couple of Toronto District School Board schools, and they found out during the impact study that the dropout and transfer rate out of the board had trended down somewhat 
absenteeism in grade nine had fallen uh, and these streamed uh, students had higher credit accumulation in grade nine. So it was only done for about two years, so they weren't really able to look at a long term study. But even in that short while, uh, some of the conclusions that were drawn were is that if the momentum had been sustained, um, it, you know, in, in that particular way, it was probable that the total cohort graduation rate would have gone up and dropout rate would have gone down compared to other cohorts. Thanks, Sita. And these are the goals of de-streaming uh, directly from the ministry document. So the first one being cultural shifts in schools and boards, the second one increasing educator capacity, and the third increased student engagement, achievement, and well-being. So if I can borrow a little bit from a fellow consultant named Jason Toe, he talks a little bit about this idea of a pedagogical ramp. The pedagogy being like the art and science behind teaching. So we have some students that arrive in grade nine who are able to take the stairs and they're able to take the stairs as high up as they are willing and wanting to go. And we value that and we're so happy to have them. There are also students who come to us for a variety of reasons who have not had access to the stairs and aren't able to take the stairs. They really need a ramp to enable them to go up to whichever level that they choose. And so by building a ramp, a pedagogical ramp, all students are going to be able to go up together and be in class and being able to access all of the curricular extensions that we can offer them. Right. Which really brings us to the question, what is a classroom that uh, look like that has diverse learners? What does that look like? So I wanted to draw your attention to the image on the right is that when we think about a differentiated instruction, which is not really a new concept, the idea is not to uh, rank student in terms of uh, their strengths. It's to understand, it's for educators to understand the unique gifts, abilities, different learning styles that different learners bring to uh, um, uh, bring to the classroom and for educators to be able to really nurture that and support that and truly again do what we stand for as a board is to help all students to achieve believe and belong uh, to their full potential. So um, I wanted to request uh, Christy to build on the notion of differentiated in instruction. Yeah, and in fact, if you look at the image over on, oh, go back for one second, Tita. Uh, that's okay. On the left, it's all about knowing the learner and being able to assess them. So if you want to flip to the next one, you can now. Uh, so if you think back, some of you might have the, in the memory of school of being assigned to a certain reading group. So on the right, this is what differentiation is not, but you might have been assigned to as a bluebird, a buzzard, or even a wombat. The thing about that was everybody in the class knew that you wanted to be a bluebird because those were the high flyers and that was the group with all of the kids that you wanted to be in a group with. So that worked really well for the bluebirds, but for the buzzards, they weren't feeling very good about themselves and they knew what it meant to be in that group too. And they were stuck there usually for the full year. So we have moved away from that in education and, and are doing the things on the left hand side here, the blue and the green, to having flexible groupings that meet the needs of students. Another way we can look at differentiation is thinking about what the goal of the learning is. So our teachers are very skilled at this. For example, if I want students to demonstrate their knowledge of fractions, let's say, I can go ahead and have them do that by showing me their understanding on paper. I can ask them to uh, bake a recipe. They might even want to create a cartoon or a GIF that shows their understanding of fractions. And students can all show their understanding, but choose the way that is best for them. Going back to that cartoon from earlier. On the other hand, there's times where there is a certain outcome or product that we're looking for. So for example, everyone must write a short story, let's say in a classroom. So we can't change that. But we can change the way that we support students in preparing for the short story, or we can even allow them to choose a different topic, the one that is of interest to them to really differentiate and personalize the learning and allow everybody to get what they need. Thank you, Christy. 
So um, you might ask, so where's the data that tells us where, uh, what the situation in Halton Catholic is? And so, like I mentioned before, uh, as a board, we have not yet started collecting this data, but we do understand that demographic data collection is a key part of de-streaming for us as a board to be able to identify where are the gaps and where are the disparities. Um, so as I had mentioned, all boards are required to collect demographic, student demographic data by January 2023 under the Anti-Racism Act. So um, uh, some boards have already been doing this work for many decades, such as Toronto District School Board or Peel District School Board. Therefore, we have some data from those neighboring boards. But as a board, we will also be getting ready to collect student demographic data so that we can really set the baseline to understand where do we stand and how do we, where are those gaps where, and how can we address those and close those gaps. Absolutely. So the million dollar question is, where is the curriculum? And why perhaps you're thinking, uh, why are we presenting to this uh, topic today? Well, we were expecting the curriculum uh, from the ministry before now. We haven't yet seen it. So uh, we are waiting anxiously for that, as are many of our teachers. But what we know so far is that equity, equity will be at the center. That will be the why of this curriculum. And then it's going to be ex an extension of the learning that students have begun in grade eight. So it's not taking any of the current program tracks that we have in grade nine right now and combining them or teaching to one level or another. It's really going to be a new and distinct curriculum. And the goal really is to create many more competent and capable mathematicians, mathematics learners. And I think that's a wonderful thing. There's a variety of reasons why math is the subject to go first, one of which being the elementary curriculum was released this past year, and it does make sense for us to follow suit with the secondary program. We also know that more students end up taking applied mathematics than any other subject within the province of Ontario. So it was a good place for this de-streaming initiative to begin. So as we wrap up, um, and hopefully this gave you some uh, uh, background information to the de-streaming process, we also wanted to sort of take a moment to emphasize that although de-streaming math in grade nine is starting next year, as a board, we really are intentionally focusing on the notion of cultivating genius for all our students from K to 12, right? It's important for us to affirm the genius in every student, consider how we can cultivate the unique gifts of every student and support every student to achieve, believe and belong. That was beautiful, Sita. And I think that goes right along with the idea of valuing all pathways and increasing access for all of our students to be able to demonstrate their learning in the best ways that they can. So that brings our presentation to an end. I see one hand up and I've got one question in the chat that uh, we can start out with, if that's uh, okay. I, you know what guys, I'm sorry, in the, in the interest of time, because we, we do have a fair bit more on the agenda, I'd ask that um, uh, anyone with questions, please use the, uh, the, the form uh, provided in the chat. Uh, we uh, will also send it out after the meeting as well. Uh, so to get your questions answered, please, we'll we'll, we'll do it that way, and uh, um, we'll uh, we'll actually we'll do that for our subsequent presentations as well. Um, so so Sia, Kristen, thank you very much uh, for um, um, I think uh, you know uh, illuminating this for for a lot of folks that uh, perhaps didn't know. Uh, what was happening with it or, or understood what what the streaming actually is um uh, so so terrific very timely thank you and we look forward to the further updates as you said uh as we wait on more from uh, from the ministry um so uh so thanks very much for your time tonight thank you thank okay you for all right thank you very much okay so um moving on to our next agenda item um virtual school uh, best practices and we have with us um, uh, speaking to this this evening, um, uh, Marissa Pitt and uh, Martin Simon, um, our virtual elementary school uh, administration. Uh, so if I could ask, um, um, if I could ask uh, Marissa and Martin to uh, please uh, take us through your presentation. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. 
I'm just waiting for Martin. I'm here. Oh, perfect. OK, so uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for allowing us to um, go through our virtual elementary school presentation with you tonight. Um, my name is Marissa Pitt, and I am one of the vice principals in the virtual school. And I am very fortunate to be presenting alongside my colleague, uh, Martin, who I will turn it over to at this stage. Thank you very much, Marissa. Uh, as Marissa said, I'm Martin Simon. I'm also one of the vice principals of the virtual school. Uh, we'd like to welcome you to our presentation on the virtual school. Um, similar to the previous presentation, there's going to be a link uh, to a form posted in the chat. Please use this form throughout the presentation to ask any questions that uh, you may have. Um, if there is some time at the end, we'll start answering those. However, in the interest of time, I'm suspecting we'll probably put together uh, an FAQ document to distribute to everyone similar to um, Sita and Kristen's pr uh, presentation. Andrea, are you, uh, you can go to the next slide. Okay, so this is just a, a brief overview of what we'll be discussing this evening. So we'll be talking about um, our staff as it is a very large school. Uh, we'll also be presenting some of our uh, stats or statistics, um, our plan this year with special education and what we've developed throughout the support of our family or sorry, our home schools and also uh, the IT supports that we have in virtual school, not just for staff, but for parents. Uh, from there, we'll have a bit of a discussion around our various learning, uh, virtual learning environments. We're going to review the different platforms that our virtual teachers use. Um, we're going to take a look at some highlights from this year and uh, some testimonials that we've received from uh, all of our uh, stakeholders. Um, and then we'll close the presentation by taking a look at uh, where the virtual school goes from here. Okay. So here is the uh, administrative team that's responsible for overseeing the operation of the virtual school. Um, Nancy Donolfo is our Halton Catholic superintendent supporting the virtual school as part of her portfolio. Uh, the day-to-day -day operations of the virtual school are overseen by our principal, Michelle Breda, and our team of three vice principals, uh, Yolanda Esposito, you know Marissa, and myself. All right, so as I said before, um, we have about 369 teachers and DECEs that are working with us. So our staff is quite large. Um, all of our staff work um, in various locations throughout their home school. Obviously now with every uh, the shutdown, we're working from home, um, but all of our school our teachers do come from all of the elementary schools within the board. Um, <laughs> our uh, other educators that we have um, are our educational assistants. Those are attached to the home school. Our social workers and our CYCs are also attached to the homeschool, so we don't actually have a designated CYC or social worker. And our certs are attached to the students from their homeschool as well. So our certs have been supporting the students throughout this whole year in virtual school. We do have um, a couple of sets, so special education classes. Uh, so we have two gifted classes, which I'll talk about a little bit later, and then we have a structured teaching class as well. And All right. Um, I'm going to give everyone uh, a moment to read this quote. Uh, it does an excellent job of capturing our beliefs about all the students here in the Halton Catholic, uh, and particularly our students with exceptionality. All, all of the decisions guiding our programs um, are also guided in the following five foundational assumptions. Um, the assumption that all students can learn. Teachers have the greatest influence over student learning. 
We can all be more than we currently are. Support and professional development are what's required to make that happen. And all of this is best accomplished in partnership with parents. In the virtual school, children who have uh, individualized education plans or English language learners, they're going to be continued, uh, they will continue to be supported by their homeschool spec, uh, spec ed staff and uh, ESL uh, staff. They will also work with um, our virtual elementary school staff to create and update any IEPs or individualized education plans for students who require support. Um, where required, uh, social work support will also be provided by the students homeschool. All of this is done in close collaboration with the staff at the virtual school. Um, so our kind of in-house special education team uh, consists of an itinerant special education consultant and a, an itinerant special education resource teacher. Um, and along with the virtual school teachers, this team supports uh, IPRCs that are completed through each student's homeschool. The needs of over 600 students with special needs are met through our virtual, virtual school teachers and the virtual school special education team uh, in consultation with the homeschool uh, spec ed department. Um, just as in brick and mortar uh, environments, any modifications or accommodations from individualized education plans uh, that are there to support the student are implemented by our teaching staff and the teaching staff is supported in this by our special education team. So this is just um, a quick overview from our last turnaround, which was March 29th. So in our primary division, we have um, 1,836 students. We have in our junior division, 1,305 students. In our intermediate division, we have 804 students with our total enrollment of 3,979 students. So we started the year roughly um, with close to 5,000 students. And throughout each one of our turnarounds, we lost students, but we also gained students. So um, we've grown tremendously throughout the year and i will talk about the next slide if you don't mind thank you andrea so when we break it down there's roughly 10 um classes what we also have french immersion and extended french classes so we have roughly um 10 uh french immersion classes and we have seven extended french classes so we have 1700 so we have about sorry, 17 classes altogether. So we have uh, 362 students who are in our French immersion and extended French classes within the virtual school as well. So we're offering the same programs that our brick and mortar students would also have. Okay, okay uh, so with any, um, uh, with uh, a virtual learning environment, um, we always run into some uh, tech issues uh, and the board knew that that was going to be a reality. So we have uh, been supported by our own um, IT support in the terms of a dedicated technician to our school um, and also the um, parents of the virtual school as well as the uh, brick and mortar schools especially now in, in remote learning, can always access our IT support through the information you see on the slide. Um, the school board has also supported families with over 2,200 devices um, to support individual student learning during uh, remote learning and throughout the year in the virtual school. Okay, so um, we are using basically three main um, um, cloud-based learning management systems to support um, our students, but also this is these are the platforms in which our teachers are teaching from. So um, for right now, everybody is probably well versed in many of these platforms. Um, 
uh, with all of us across the board being um, learning remotely right now. So D2L, um, it's also called Brightspace. You um, may hear that term as well. Our Google Classroom, many of our teachers are using Google Classroom and then our teachers are teaching live lessons from Microsoft Teams. So just to kind of explain a little bit about the three of them. So D2L is an innovative cloud-based learning management system. It's designed for creating, hosting, and editing online learning resources. So if we think about D2L as being a place where um, most of the content is stored, it also allows the teachers to uh, share any of the learning resources that they might have for their students. It's great in that there is just a single use login, so you don't have to keep entering your username and password, which is a great um, uh, feature. And also it is uh, mobile friendly and friendly on um, iPads and other pieces of technology and devices. With Google Classroom, um, our teachers, many of our teachers are using Google Classroom. Some of your um, kids may be using Google Classroom as well. It's an educational friendly platform like D2L. Um, its benefits are for sharing um, content, sharing assessments. It's great because it can connect to your Google Docs or Google Slides that you might create. So most of the teachers are creating content in Google Slides and then sharing those slides um, with regards to that. So they're able to share YouTube images, videos, screencasts, those kinds of things. And so the live lessons um, throughout the day are being taught through Microsoft Teams. So just as we're holding this meeting tonight, the teacher is broadcasting the content and the students are able to ask questions um, in that real, uh, real time. And we'll go to the next slide. All right, um, Marissa and I and the, and the whole virtual um, school team are immensely proud of all the work that has gone on in the uh, virtual school. And, uh, you know, we just want to take a little time to um, talk a bit about its uh, inception and, and where we've gone. So from the moment the first ministry announcement was made regarding the need to have a virtual school option for families, uh, there was a whole group of people in our board uh, that got right down to work. Uh, putting all the pieces together has certainly not been easy. And <laughs> Uh, improvements are constantly being made uh, every day. Um, the analogy, and it, no, it's not mine, but it uh, resonated with me and it works best for me regarding the virtual school, is, is the idea of trying to uh, build an airplane while you're flying it. Um, we recently had an opportunity to ask our virtual school community to submit messages that we could use to put together a video for uh, the recently passed Teacher Appreciation Day. Uh, frankly, the response was completely overwhelming. We received hundreds and hundreds of images, videos, uh, and messages from parents and students. Um, we put uh, just a few quotes from um, these messages on these uh, next couple of slides. Please take a moment just to um, have a look at those. I, I think they capture some of the good news stories and some of the successes we've had much better than Marissa and I could voice <laughs> on our own.
All right. So throughout this virtual experience, um, you know, we do miss being in schools where we get to see the children and walk into a classroom, but we've been fortunate um, enough to have a lot of the classes um, and the students and the teachers inviting us into their class to see what it is that they're learning throughout the day. So this is a photo from uh, one of our kindergarten classes. Um, so their day, although they are all working out of their houses um, and learning virtually, they very much come together. And this is um, a morning of them starting with their uh, morning exercises, their opening prayer and their national anthem. And it was great to see the kids all participating. And many of them, I know at school, they often um, fight to who's going to hold the flag in the morning. So many of these students have made flags at home or parents have purchased flags from the dollar store that they wave in the morning during the national anthem. Honestly, it was pretty um, exciting to see that in the morning and it, and it was emotional to see all the kids participating and in this kinder class. And you can all, all often hear other siblings who might be younger in the background also trying to sing and participate in morning exercises. So if you can go to the next slide, Andrea. So the next few slides, I'm just gonna take you through some of the um, different examples of work, but also some of the applications or websites that our teachers are using as well. So again, these are pictures that um, I've taken while visiting some of the classes. So this um, in the on the left hand side. Um, so I think Kristen and Sita talked about in their presentation um, about people having virtual uh, tasks, whether it be paper to pencil tasks and also some of the technical technology devices that we're using to help support in the students learning. So uh, the picture on your left is a kindergarten um, class where these children were taking uh, surveys and collecting data and then they were graphing the data that they had come up with. And the teacher later on in that lesson had read the book, Have You Have You Filled a Bucket Today? And then she used Padlet, which is the image below, and it shows um, the kids' responses to how they're filling their uh, peers' buckets or their family members' buckets throughout the day. So the teacher um, took uh, orally the student's responses and then used Padlet to uh, showcase the responses. Andrea, if you can go to the next slide. And I'm just going to ask, perfect, that you play this. So this is an example of um, one of our grade seven class who, classes who's been working on uh, coding with their students. So um, the teacher has been teaching coding and, and how to write code. And then from there, the students came up with, this is their culminating activity. So it is, um, they developed, they were talking about ecosystems. So they developed a model of a healthy ecosystem and then there were the teacher was talking to them about the impacts that humans have on ecosystems. So this was um, made through Playcraft uh, Learn, which is a website, a coding website. So it's pretty amazing to see where these, how these students, and and for the most part, many of these students have just started coding this year, and it's amazing to see some of the. Uh, pieces that they've been able to master and come up with throughout the school year. This is another example of Padlet for um, one of our grade eight classes. So they were also learning about um, indigenous heritages and it was uh, tied to an art class that they talked about. So they had the students had to do some research on uh, a piece of indigenous art that they liked 
And then they used Padlet to um, showcase some of their their uh, work that they came up with. And um, so Padlet is just, if we think of it almost as being like a bulletin board in a classroom as well. So it acts for a way for students to share their information. This is a, an example from a grade three class, um, or maybe it was a grade two class. Um, so this application is called Whiteboard FI. The uh, great thing about this is so each individual student would see a whiteboard that they can answer all of the questions on, and then they see their own whiteboard and the teacher's whiteboard. So they don't see their what their peers are working on, but the teacher can see all of the whiteboards of the students in the class. So it's a great way for um, the teacher to get a better understanding in real time of what the students um, know about the topic. And then it's great because the teacher can spotlight one student and they can share their what they know about it and they can um, present that to their class as well. So that's uh, from Whiteboard FI. And this was uh, from a grade six class that um, I don't know, Andrea, if the video will actually play, but the students did a culminating on. Um, oh. Sorry, sorry, guys. In the, in the interest of time, do you mind if we? Uh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Question? Thank you. Sorry. OK. Um, we will just the next slide. I will skip. So Andrea, if you can just go over. This is, I'll just quickly say, these are just some of the guest speakers that we've had. We've had a lot of virtual field trips as well. And I will let Martin take on the next slide. Okay, I'll try and uh, make this uh, <laughs> brief. Um, so let's turn our attention to the, the future. We've talked about change is the only constant we have in at the virtual school. Um, Plans are already underway in terms of being prepared for whatever the virtual school is going to look like uh, next year. So the ministry made, uh, Minister Lecce made an announcement that the boards are to have a virtual school option for parents on Tuesday, May the 4th. Um, we've also distributed a survey, an initial survey was distributed on March 3rd, where we wanted to get an in early indication on parents' intentions for their children for the upcoming uh, school year. Uh, and they were gonna, uh, in that survey, they chose which learning environment they were currently thinking for their uh, children. Um, recognizing that that health situation continues to evolve in Ontario, the parents will be surveyed again, uh, not too long from now in early June, to confirm their choice uh, mm -hmm. for, their, uh, for the virtual school next year, um, or to choose a, a brick and mortar environment. Um, they're going to have that uh, opportunity to kind of solidify their choice uh, in that June survey. Um, based on the initial and ministry mandate and the results of the uh, first survey uh, and then the, uh, the next survey, that's really going to factor in in a big way in terms of the planning for the school next year. Andrew, you can go to the next slide. All right. So uh, in response uh, to educational research and a lot of uh, feedback from our stakeholders, our parent community, uh, looking forward to the virtual school next year, one of the things we're going to implement is a balanced day schedule. Okay, so this, um, this doesn't change the number of minutes for teaching or for being in school. Uh, rather, it just changes some of the blocks of time from the traditional two short recesses and one long lunch or hour lunch to one longer recess and two nutrition breaks. Uh, research has shown this type of a schedule results in more uninterrupted instructional time, improvements in student concentration and energy level, more time for daily physical activity and play, and it has a positive impact on achievement by students and their overall health. 
Um, another example of putting the learning that we did this year into action is going to be to further support our virtual teachers. Uh, we're looking at uh, supporting them with enhanced equipment. Um, the need to, uh, for supplementary equipment like a second screen, a document camera, and a dedicated webcam to allow teachers to be able to pivot at a moment's notice and provide explanation and instruction using all the benefits of multimedia that is afforded them at the virtual school, you know, is what precipitated this need for this uh, equipment moving forward. We're also going to supplement that with increased digital tools. Our curriculum department's been hard at work um, looking into options to augment both math and language instruction, among other uh, subject areas with enhanced digital offering. Okay. Uh, further support also in response from feedback to our community. We are currently hard at work coming up with a student toolkit that will be provided for each of our virtual school students next year. A different kit for the early years, primary, junior, and intermediate. Things like math manipulatives, um, some notebooks, etc. We're taking all of the ideas we've received from uh, getting feedback from our teachers uh, and our parents and looking also at the research in terms of what is needed at home to supplement the virtual education. Um, finally, uh, there's been a ton of learning done by our staff. I really have to commend our teachers and our, all our educators, our um, DECEs as well. They have really been on the treadmill all year. Um, you know, doing what I would call the regular cycle of learning that you get in brick and mortar and adding this whole layer of learning different um, digital tools uh, and, and building their network and collaborating. So we're going to look to formalize all that. We're going to look to collect and curate all of the great learning and resources that they have found and apply all of this into uh, the, you know, the outcome, what the virtual school will look like next year. And I think, all right, and I think that's uh, the end of our presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Take a minute to access the question form. If you get a, a chance, it's in the chat, and we will respond to your questions over the next few days. Thank Terrific. You. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much, uh, Marissa and Martin. Um, uh, we wish we had time to more time in there to um, enjoy those, those other pieces you wanted to share. I apologize for that. Uh, we've got we've got uh, 10 pounds of potatoes in a, in a five pound, pound bag tonight. <laughs> so thank you, though. Uh, a lot covered there. All right. And and, and again, folks, if uh, if you have questions, do take advantage of the, uh, the opportunity to reach out to them and uh, we'll, we'll get your questions answered. Um, OK, uh, moving on to our, our, our last uh, item on the agenda. And uh, we've got a presentation here from um, IDARE. Uh, and we've got uh, Bonnie uh, Wiltshire, and um, I believe Bonnie has a couple of friends with her as well uh, to, to speak to us about uh, IDARE and, and the initiative uh, that they've undertaken there. Uh, so um, uh, take it away. Thank you. Bonnie, you're muted. Yeah, I am. I just want to say thank you to the Council of Chairs co-chairs for having us tonight and also to APSI for including a little write up on our Queen of Heaven IDEA um, parent committee in their recent newsletter. Uh, we don't have time for questions. Um, in the interest of time, we will share a link right now um, in the chat where you can submit your questions and comments. And I'll jump right in and I'll try to speed through because I don't want to keep people too late. And I'll try to, to end with, with gusto and energy. Uh, so the IDEA, um, uh, the IDEA brand um, stands for Inclusion, Diversity, Anti-Racism and Equity. And our slogan is Many Voices, One Vision. And the small I, you would notice that there's a small I, if you look at the IDEA um, behind me, um, the small I is symbolic of diminishing a focus on self or self-interest to focus equally and equitably on the diverse needs of the many. And our IDEA committee Re, it was a rebranded committee um, last fall. We had a parent um, diversity committee and we also had a student diversity committee and we rebranded to IDEA with expanded mandate, um, subcommittees, vision, and also um, broad reach throughout um, our community and also beyond in the Holton community. 
Our mission is to create and promote a diverse, inclusive, accepting, welcoming and safe environment for students, staff and families in our school community. And our principles are based on the biblical principles of you know, everyone created in, in God's unique image and likeness, that we are called to love one another as God has loved us, and also nothing about us with us, which means that our activities reflect um, the diverse culture in our community, and also we reach out to the people in our communities who have lived experience to engage them in, in what we are doing in our initiatives so they are reflective and accurate and respectful. Our mandate includes um, to foster the idea, culture and spirit in the school, as, as I've said, to embrace the uniqueness of all individuals in our diverse community, um, targeted parent engagement, applying the idea lens throughout all what we, everything that we do, all the initiatives, events, even the curriculum that we have, you know, how we can promote idea through the, the aids to lessons that are uh, lesson plans are created by teachers. We also have a fostering uh, as a mandate, fostering a culture of idea, lifelong learning. And I'll talk a bit about that later and also pro promoting uh, unique cultures and diasporas that are reflected in our community. And I'll also talk about an initiative, just briefly mention it when I talk about the Student Com Idea Committee and also as idea stewards and creators of the idea brand. Um, we reach beyond us to talk and, and to mentor other schools to set up their own idea committees and also engage them in collaboration. Uh, we have a tripartite um, a setup of our structure of our idea committees, tripartite meaning we have our administration um, involved, our principal and two vice principals. We have our parent idea committee. And that committee has four subcommittees. One is the cultural events committee. Another one is the communications committee. We have a finance committee and we have a recently established First Nations Métis and Inuit in Affairs subcommittee. Plus we have the broader committee, which involves parents and teachers who regularly attend our meetings and also new parents who come on and off as they as they see fit and as they as it resonates with them. So we send out our agendas to the meetings. We ask for for feedback from from parents and whatnot, you know, through Google Forms, we engage the parent community. What is the value add of, of the IDEA brand? Well, as I said, you know, in fall Sept September um, 2020, in the fall of la last year, we rebranded our diversity committee to IDEA, and here's what we added. We had IDEA logos. So you would see right now we have a student IDEA logo, which would appear as the hand, and that logo is designed by students through a competition, a grade eight student, won the competition this year and this is her design and every year we would run a competition with the students to design an, uh, an idea student logo brand and we would have that on our communications in addition to our idea logo. The idea logo you see there is the idea logo that we have stylized right now into the pride colors um, showing our, our support and acceptance and solidarity with you know our two-spirit uh, LGBTQ plus community and then we also have um, uh, the, I, the Queen of Heaven logo that appears um, on our communication documents as well. We also have the, our educational series, which is a, what, one of our, I think we're very proud of it. It's a series that we develop based on the themes and, and events that occur monthly. For example, we would have done a large educational deck in Black History Month, uh, which would have everything from expla explaining what the issues are, current issues, etc., the history, the context, etc., um, resources for 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 learning for for educators. It would include spotlights on um, notable um, Black Canadians uh, and, and notable um, uh, people in the community. It also include resources um, for uh, like books for different grade levels in reading and movies suggestions for different grade levels. And this is the the template we use for all of our educational series decks. So this month we, we did one on the anti the, uh, the Asian um, Heritage Month, uh, and, and this was a, a broad deck that covered, we did two decks actually, um, and the, the decks covered all the different, again, wh who is the Asian community, how, how, how are they described in terms of geographically, where do they fall, um, information about what are the issues, concerns, um, we, we, we flagged and highlighted and spotlighted, you know, notable 
um, Asian um, business people and otherwise uh, in the community. We provided reading resources, et cetera, et cetera. And we did, and so next month, for example, we would be having large deck on the Indigenous National Indigenous Heritage Month and also for, for Pride Month as well. We have also strategic communications for school home engagement. And that means that we have a Facebook page, which is new. We have uh, the IDEA um, website, which is which is just recently launched and go live. And we will include a link to that website at the end of this presentation. Um, we have um, the IDEA newsletter that we launched. So we put out a newsletter every, every week. Um, we have the monthly one at the beginning of the month, which covers all that's happening. What are the themes events for this month? Um, we have different sections on it where we promo different um, activities for the month that we're doing, that we're launching. Um, we have contests that we launch that are tied to themed events, and that's how we engage parents and families and students in, in what we're doing. So they might have to, to look at a movie and then answer three questions. You know, how did you feel about the movie? What resonated the most, etc. And then with their consent through the Google Form, the entry, we, we post those responses on a Padlet. So we also have the idea Padlet. Um, we also have um, uh, workshops and guest speakers that we, we have that may be monthly, depending. Um, sometimes a workshop, sometimes it's a guest, guest speaker. And um, which year is this from? This is current in terms of um, the idea brand. Was, it was launched in September 2020. And, and we have been promoting it and we have through our administrators, they have been championing it at their levels, administrators to administrators and their different meetings and whatnot. I'm sorry if I'm speeding, but I'm just trying to make sure that we get through. And we also have um, established community partnerships. So we would reach out to organizations in the community um, who have um, initiatives like youth, youth initiatives, youth focus initiatives. So for example, um, we, we had um, guest speakers from, from uh, the Halton Regional Police Services, the Diversity and Equity uh, Inclusion, our, our Sergeant Ryan Smith to talk to us about the youth initiatives that they have. And we talked to Adam, um, we had guest speaker Adam Van Covident, our, our MB, MPP, come in and talk about his role um, with youth um, as his port part of his portfolio and learned about that. And we also um, had um, two co-leaders from Representation Matters from uh, St. Francis Xavier talk to us about um, their, what they're doing and formed a partnership with them so they could be like the big brother, big sister to our IDEA student committee, etc. We also have launched an IDEA Graduate Student Award to recognize a graduating grade eight student um, who reflect in the who reflects the values and ideals of of idea, and then we're also launching an idea second secondary school graduate scholarship where we actually provide a, a monetary scholarship to a graduating student in a secondary school that we choose um, to support their tuition expenses and whatnot. And lastly, we have the school branding. We have expanded the branding of idea in our school. Um, last summer, we had a diversity poster that was um, um, implemented in the school. And now going forward, we have uh, um, an unlearned, unlearned mural that is going to be installed. We also are, are planning to have an indigenous, indigenous, indigenous mural um, to be installed next month. We have designed an idea banner and roll up idea promotional banners as well and promotional materials. And we have um, uh, a business, uh, a community business that is supporting us to um, do idea merchandise. So we have water bottles with the idea brand and also t-shirts with the idea brand that we can you know, provide as, as contest prizes or sell, you know, for fundraising, etc. And then part of idea, we've established an idea prayer practice, which also is incorporated into our, our newsletters and also an idea self-care which is incorporated into our newsletters. So the prayer practice would have a prayer you know, that aligns with you know, a theme that's happening or, 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 or an international event is responsive to what's happening in the, in the community. And so that by that way, we are encouraging our students and staff and families to be more attuned with and sensitive to the needs of others and the needs of what's happening beyond ourselves in the greater um, environment and the greater world. And with the self-care practice, we, we of course, we, we celebrate the fact that we have Halton Conservation. So we, we talk about, you know, we, we promote taking a hike and whatnot, but we also have, you know, 
um, it, uh, issues of newsletters where we talk about you know different you know I, um, self care apps etc. Just trying to support mental health, positive mental health, and do what we can as an idea community. We also do idea mentorship. You know, which which I said before, we 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 have meetings with some of the schools. We have six schools who have adopted the brand so far. We've had a lot of interest, and we have um, people who ask us and invite us to to join. You know, their their meeting, their first inaugural meetings, and we talk about you know how we establish our committee, and we we help them. You know, we answer any questions. You know, uh, and we offer our mentorship. So, you know, schools can call us at any time, reach out to us at any time. They need to set up any of the kinds of initiatives that we have set up. We also have collaborated with other schools by sharing resources. We have schools that have sent us, uh, you know, for example, they've, they've compiled links of national anthems in different cultures, and they've shared that with us, or, or we've shared our individual different um, educational series decks that they requested to see. Uh, these decks are, of course, very, very comprehensive, very detailed. Some of them are like 32 slides long. They are they they have longevity. Um, people can take their times and t take their time and and peruse them, etc. And then also we have, um, you know, different different ways of engaging with the greater community. Because part of our mission and mandate is to spread the idea culture throughout Halton and beyond. Form those collaborations, build those synergies, and 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 support other schools to put their unique stamp. And their unique um, uh, um, footprint on our idea culture. So we move together, we thrive together. And lastly, uh, the idea um, committees uh, and their deliverables are excellent, um, measurable, um, uh, performance measurable points for schools to use as part of their report backs on their diversity action plans. So we synchronize and align what we do with what our school you know, is, is is planning to do or planning to report back on. So we work together, we build synergy, we collaborate, and together we we push we push forward. It's it's about everybody, you know, winning together, everybody moving forward together, and all schools creating that legacy so that when our students at elementary level graduate, they take that culture with them into the secondary level and so on and so on. And that's uh my quick speed presentation. Margie was just going to flash the the website up. I think that's all she has time to do. Just flash it up and she'll put the link in the chat um, so that people can then peruse the website actually will um, show you uh, and demonstrate and reflect all the different initiatives I've spoken about and people can peruse it at their at their leisure and any questions they are happy to answer. You can contact us through the the information Google form that Margie provided. Thank you. Yep. So uh, I'm just going to touch on the fact that we've got a number of different headings there. Uh, the educational series that Bonnie touched on is in, in here. You can basically look through all of the different educational series that we've done, including some of our upcoming events, previous events, uh, and you can really see the work that's been done in the, in the school and outside of the school as part of this partnership for iDARE. And I will put that up in the chat now. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Margie. All right. Thank you both very much. And um, thank thank you, Bonnie. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, yeah, I know a, a lot to squeeze in there. And, um, you know, I, I, honestly, on behalf of the committee, I, I, I want to I'm going to apologize to um, our, our presenters this evening because uh, I think we've 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 shortchanged some uh, some some topics tonight in, in our efforts to try and cover uh, as many important and timely uh, matters as we as we can, um, you know, inclusion math, um, uh, obviously virtual school, uh, so much going on right now. We, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, I guess our, our, our best of intentions to uh, to get as much relevant, um, you know, material in. Um, but, but unfortunately, I think we've uh, uh, shortchanged our presenters uh, a, a bit here, and, and I think we'll have to do some some revisiting. But please, folks, do reach out and engage uh, with, with uh, the, our various presenters. Um, uh, from from tonight and uh, for for further information, uh, they're they're very open and willing and and there for us um, and providing that support. So uh, so please do take advantage of that. Um, and again, thank you to all our presenters uh, this evening for for your valuable contributions. All right, um, and uh, before we close off with our closing prayers and, and and thank you everyone by the way for your your patience. We have gone over time. 
um, here uh, here this evening. Um, I do want to extend a heartfelt uh, thank you uh, to to all of our um, uh, our CFIC members. Um, first of all, uh, for your your contributions this year, our outgoing CFIC members, thank you for your uh, two or more years of service in some cases uh, to to this committee um, and and to uh, our our board and our families and our parents. Um, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, and um, to the administrators, to uh, our council of chairs, our, our chairs and co-chairs throughout the um, our, our schools. Uh, again, trying times, um, a challenging year, but uh, uh, we've seen lots of examples of, of, of school councils rising to the occasion and and achieving great things, truly great things this year. Uh, so, so really well done. Uh, please do give yourselves um, a, a pat on the back. I, I offer mine virtually. Um, and uh, here, here's looking forward to uh, next year and continuing our work. Um, uh, we're, we're not done the school year, of course. Uh, just, just really <laughs> remarks to uh, our Council of Chairs meetings. Um, looking forward to um, our, our ones coming up next year. Okay, uh, with that, I will, uh, and of course, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank our, our trustees uh, that were able to attend tonight and Director Daly as well and our superintendents. Thank you all. Uh, and speaking of superintendents, I'll pass it over to um, Superintendent Donolfo Nancy, if you wouldn't mind um, your maybe perhaps your own closing remarks and uh, then closing off with uh, with a prayer. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry, and thank you for leading our meeting and keeping us as best as we could on time tonight. Um, to our presenters, thank you so much. And your presentations were timely and important information to share with our parents. So thank you for your presentations. Um, as we said, we were going to be able to have time for questions, but there are opportunities to ask your questions and we will, those forms will be open. And what we'll do is the session tonight has been recorded. We are going to post it to the CPIC uh, page on our board's website. And then the responses to the questions will be posted there as well. Um, our staff that have presented today were, will be available for additional questions. The so parents, if you do have questions, you could go through your, your school. Um, for the questions, you can come through my office for your questions, and we'll do our best to answer it. And to our IDARE representatives through Queen of Heaven, questions can go there as well. Okay, I know that some of the schools already have had IDARE present to your Catholic school councils, and it's been well received. So thank you very much, Bonnie and Margie, for your presentation tonight. And in closing, I too want to thank everyone, first of all, to Jen and Jerry, our, our co-chairs of CPIC this year. You've done a wonderful job. It's been a pleasure getting to know you and working with you this year. To all our CPIC members, um, the work that we've done together this year during very different times um, to support our Catholic school councils, to engage parents, to work through our bylaws, and to set some new goals for us going forward. Um, to our new CPIC members, welcome, and we look forward to working together with you. I think we're excited that we do have, we're going to be off and running, that we have CPIC members established for next year. We will be in need of the community reps, so we will do reach out in the fall for that. A um, special thank you to uh, Steve, Olu, Joel, and Sarah. We do have one more CPIC meeting for the year, but thank you in this public forum for all that you have done. To our presenters tonight, to our trustees, to our administrators, to all our Catholic School Council chairs, our OAPSI reps, to our director, thank you everyone for being with us tonight. And I'd like to end with a closing prayer. Please join me in the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Oh God, you chose us on this day and night to remain in your love as we encounter those we meet. Help us to grow in our ability to love others as fully as you have loved us in giving your life for us. Give us the patience and understanding we need to see the good in others, to see and love in them what you see and love in all their children. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, all. Thank you.